Thank you, Ruth. You know, it's interesting listening to the other panelists and having received Ruth's paper a few days earlier with the subject being the predicaments and prospects of today's art world and thinking about a panel that would include representatives of a range of art forms and for each of us categories where the antecedents or the artifacts that inform what we do and what we are about are of course all very different. And in that respect, to hear Claude Lanzmann speak about the age that we are just emerging from, we think and hope, in which our eyes were wide shut, I immediately had in my mind the image of Paul Clay's 1920 Angelus Novus, and it brought tears to my eyes to have Claude Lanzmann end with a reference to Angelus Novus, which actually for me and perhaps for us in the Israel Museum in its paper watercolor frailty might be the most important treasure among the 500,000 that we hold. And so even thinking about how we all represent different forms that come from different places, in a way much of what we do of course is about our senses. For some of us it's about our eyes, for others of us it's about our ears. You know it was also interesting listening to Shari uh, in a way chastise us for being lazy. And as I started to think about the three or four categories that I might mention, it occurred to me to speak about museums a bit as being spoiled. Not lazy, but spoiled, another, uh, another trait that we shouldn't bear or be proud of. And yet in the case of museums, or particularly museums like ours, which are encyclopedic museums, our job is to be about embracing the continuum of material culture in my life at MoMA before coming to the Israel Museum, my focus was on the emergence of modernism from 150 years ago to the present and of course to what comes after the present. And my life now in the Israel Museum is about looking forward but it's also about looking backward and it's as if in an encyclopedic museum like ours, you open the floodgates to all of the sources of modernism. And so for us in museums, the point is that we are a continuum of culture, we're meant to be a continuum of culture from the beginning of material cultural time to the present. And this is a very different mission from the challenge in contemporary culture which is about the contradictions that appear so often in contemporary mediums. For us, past examples simply represent the frame for the present and the unfolding foundation for the future. With respect to our own museum and what we are doing at the current moment, and Ruth has referred to the transforming renewal that is currently underway, perhaps what we are doing is symbolic of this notion of what museums are about. I hope you all know our campus. What it is is exemplary of the kind of aesthetic synthesis that you rarely see anywhere in the world. We are about the integration of art and archeology, span of architecture and landscape in a way that is unbelievably powerful. And if you ask me at another moment why it is that I'm here in Jerusalem, it is exactly because of the power of that landscape. You look at our architecture, which was created in the mid-1960s, and it is an amazing example of a kind of migratory modernism that you see nowhere else. The architect of our buildings, Alfred Mansfeld, came from Russia through the Bauhaus to Palestine and brought international modernism here. Uh, Frederick Kiesler, the architecture of the Shrine of the Book, was a conceptual modernist who went from Austria to America before World War II. Isamu Noguchi, the Japanese perhaps first environmental sculptor of this last century who migrated from Japan also to the US brought a unique oriental landscape to our setting in Jerusalem and laid it over the ancient and antique hillside that is our museum site. If one wants to talk about globalization, in a way this represents globalization before globalization. And I think one can think in many ways that globalization is simply a term for something that's been around for a long time in many ways. We talk in the museum world about being a universal museum, about universalism. And in a way, this is also simply a buzzword. And if you look at the site, setting, and collections of the Israel Museum, you see that we are an example and we are not the only example in the museum world. The project that is currently unfolding on our campus is indeed a transforming renewal 
of our campus, and its message is meant to be about the notion of reinforcing the quality of the original message that I've just described. It's not about tearing down and beginning again. It's about building on this notion of the connected accumulation of the past coming into the present and looking toward the future. Our project is about architecture, but it's actually also about content. It's about the idea of reordering the galleries of the museum to show the continuum of material culture in archaeology from one million years ago to the time of the Ottoman Empire and its diaspora, and then to look at the diaspora of Jewish world culture from this part of the world, both to the east and to the west, and then to look at the way in which there has been a connection in the diaspora of those cultures to the unfolding of the Western fine art traditions and how those Western traditions relate to non-Western cultures. If we talk for a moment about Israeli art, in a funny way, what we are doing in our project is trying to make Israeli art and the art here of the last hundred years a kind of focal point for the merging of Europeanism that preceded it, traditional Jewish iconography that became and transformed into the visual culture that became the visual language of the modern Jewish state of Israel, and that in a way becomes a springboard for our looking at the fine arts, looking backward and looking forward. Thinking for a moment of current issues and just touching on a few of the points that Ruth raised, I would say that many of them are in fact quite resonant with what is happening in Israeli, what is happening in Israeli art today. In terms of new media, there's been a kind of serendipity in the way that artists facility here with technology has been very beneficial and very important in the way that traditional tra photography has transformed into digital imaging, in the way that video has transformed into the sophistication of DVD today, in a way that you see many artists here bursting onto the global landscape in a way that was not the case before. In an interesting way, and because my life institutionally has really been about two museums, the Museum of Modern Art and the Israel Museum, it's fascinating for me to see that artists from here that we have paid great attention to in the last 10 years have been shown on the landscape of the Israel Museum, in, I mean of the Museum of Modern Art in its galleries just within the last two or three year time. Or to think that Michael Arad, who's going to speak after me, is the architect for the project at the World Trade Center site. This really wraps all of these points together, I think, in a very nice way. To touch for a moment on the notion of commercialism, I don't think we have to talk about it. What is commercialism but just another platform for visibility and for us in our field, this is quite important. And finally, an, a, a point that Ruth raised that I think should come up here in case there are any questions from you, the notion of restitution of cultural property from one part of the world to another. What is restitution but simply the subject of historical awareness? It's the point about where cultural material, wherever it is held, comes from, and what your responsibility is with respect to it as a matter of custodianship. And on that point, and coming from the museum field, I'll only end by saying that we who are focused so on culture hold it in our hands, but we are only its custodians, we are not its owners. Thank you. <laughs>